Hi and welcome to this video where I ask the question what is the purpose of our life? I think that most of us have asked ourselves that question at one time or another. Mainly we seem to ask it when we are at a low point in our lives and wanting us to know what is the point of everything. However, whether we're at a low point or not, it's, a, it's still a good thing to ask the question, have you found out why you were born? Many of us seem locked into some sort of predetermined path of, say, poverty or criminality, drudgery, or even riches, frivolity and fun. But at some point, the question arises, what is the point of all this? We may see our purpose in life as providing for our family. Or we may see our purpose as becoming successful. Now, there's nothing wrong with either of those examples. In fact, the Bible makes clear the importance of family and hard work. However, as Christians, we have only one purpose in our lives. The last thing that Jesus told his disciples before ascending back to heaven is found in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Of course, the disciples did just that. And Christianity spread throughout the world. Today, 2,000 years later, 31% of the world's population is Christian. Paul told the Corinthians in his second letter to them in chapter 5, verses 18 to 21. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of of reconciliation that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation therefore we are ambassadors for Christ God making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, how many of us realise just what our responsibility in this life is? When we made Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour, we were reconciled to God. Our sins were forgiven because Jesus took them upon himself. And we became the righteousness of God. Then, and only then, we were reconciled with God. But Paul adds that God has entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation. And because of that, he has made us ambassadors for Christ. The title of ambassador, ambassador sounds very important, and it is. The dictionary says that an ambassador is an important official who lives in a foreign country and represents his or her own country's interests in there, in that country. Jesus told us in John 
15 verse 19 if you were of the world the world would love you as its own but because you are not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you we live in this world but we are not of this world but we have a purpose in this world because we are the ambassador for Christ in this world with the sole purpose of reconciling the world to God through Christ. We are called to share the good news of the gospel. Now sharing a good news story isn't something that many of us struggle with on an everyday basis. But when it comes to telling other people about our faith, we can suddenly find ourselves lost for words. Many are put off telling people about their faith because they fear rejection. Now, I was reluctant because I felt that I would be challenged and would not know all the answers. I've learned that it doesn't have to be daunting at all. Because there are so many different ways that we can do it. We can treat others with kindness, even though they appear different to us. We can practice forgiveness and speak about God's love for us. Now it's also important to realise that we share our faith with not only non-Christians but Christians as well. And that is exactly what the early church did so well. They went out into the world and told the good news of the gospel and converted non-believing Jews and Gentiles. But also they gave each other support and strength at a time that Christians were being really persecuted as they are in many parts of the world today. I think it is important to realise that we cannot ju do just one or the other. We cannot just sit in our church buildings just talking to our own people safe in the knowledge that we are saved. Nor can we go out into the world and just evangelise to unbelievers and neglect to minister to our fellow believers. None of us can ever be like Billy Graham and bring hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people to Christ. But if by our actions of being more like Jesus, by showing the fruits of his spirit, which we can read in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. An ambassador of any country must represent that country with integrity, representing the interests to the best of their abilities. And that's what we are commanded to do. Reconcile people to God and to do it as Jesus did it. It's not important how many people are saved because of what we have said or done. What is important is that we live our lives as an ambassador for Christ, not just on Sunday, but every day. Now, in conclusion, I came across a great quote by Mark Twain. He said, the two most important days in life are the day that you were born and the day you found out why. For me, that day came at the age of 66, 
when I realised that there was a plan and a purpose for my life. And for you, it could be today. Thank you for watching today's video. I pray you are encouraged to fulfil the purpose of your life with boldness. If you would like to watch other videos like this one, why not go to my YouTube channel or even subscribe by clicking the button at the end of this video. For now, it's goodbye and may God bless you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.